peace of God be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When God becomes man, he is water, blood, and spirit. Everlasting gospel delivered to the world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba, Olumba Abu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, St. John chapter 10, verse 30. Second lesson, St. John chapter 14, verse 10. Golden text, first John chapter 5, verse 8. Quote, Brethren, where are your papers and pens to take notes of these Gospels? If you are posted to India, America or any of the European countries, how are you going to relate these Gospels to, to as, as students of the Christ Universal Spiritual School of Practical Christianity? The reason? you do not come with your writing material is because you are coming for prayers. These lessons are what the whole world needs. When you are asked by the people outside whether you are being taught or whether you have been to a seminary, you say no. If you are not taught and you have never been to a seminary, how do you understand the scriptures? No examine the lesson just read out to you if i do not reveal them how would you understand it is the revelation of these lessons that teaches you the scriptures i could have taken this lesson very lightly but at this time i want to reveal the hidden mysteries of god to you I do not know the reason why I am exposing these mysteries to you. These mysteries have confounded the wisdom of the whole world. My hope is on the tape recording because these are going to be translated and compiled into booklets which will be used in teaching the whole world. If all of us here had come to receive the recondite teaching of the Holy Father, by now all of you would have refrained from all manners of sin. Since you regard Brotherhood of the Cross and Star as a prayer house, that is why you continue to sin. My mission on earth is not to establish a church or a prayer house or a healing home, but I have come into the world as a, as a supernatural teacher. To reveal the teachings that has never existed in the world. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Albeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you to the accurate knowledge of truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. I have come into the world because of this statement of Christ. That he will come and lead you to the wisdom of truth. When people ask you, where have you learned all these wonderful gospels that you are delivered? That are delivering? It had been written in the prophets that God will teach them everything. The whole world will come to this Christ Universal Spiritual School of Practical Christianity to learn everything. Now, I want to reveal this statement in the scriptures that says, I and my Father are one, to all of you, so that you will realize that all the words of God do not fall to the ground and return empty-handed. You will discover that any passage that you read in the scriptures which refers to Jesus is incomplete. If you say God or Jehovah, you have failed. 
when you say Jehovah God and his Christ, then you refer to Jehovah God and his Christ. The Father and the Son are one entity. Wherever you find our Lord Jesus Christ, there is wherever you find our Lord Jesus Christ is where you will find God the Father. Wherever you find God the Father, you will also find our Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever the carcass is, there you will find the vultures. People do not believe that the Father and the Son are one because they feel that God is separate from man. Now, somebody can ask you, where is that your God? Who is that human being before you? Is that not God? It had been written in the prophets that ye are gods, ye are children of the Most High God. Since people do not believe that they are the children of God, and nobody had revealed it to them, that is why I have come to reveal these hidden mysteries to you. Many people make mistake when they call on only Christ to come and save them. The reason is that the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost are one. Always call on God the Father and the Son. Have you not heard that I and my Father are one? Christ represents the Father. Jesus is flesh and blood while the Father is the Spirit. Jesus is flesh and blood. He is an angel. When he is in the flesh, he is flesh, blood and spirit. What was used to identify Christ as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords was not because he raised the dead or opened the eyes of the blind or all the miracles that he performed. The likeness of God here on earth is water, blood and spirit. That is the reason why. Whenever water is removed from your body, your life ends. When there is no more blood in your body, that is the end of your life. It is said, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and the three are one. There are three that bear witness on earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. When God personified his ear on earth, there are three things that you can use to identify him. That is water, blood, and the spirit. Water cannot say that he alone is God. Blood alone cannot claim to be God, nor the spirit. The, I, the Trinity God is water, blood, and the spirit. There is never a time that the Spirit will appear before you. It is only water and blood with Spirit that can appear before you. That is why it is said that I and my Father are one. When God comes into this mundane plane, He will appear as human being. In the Spirit, He will appear in the form of an angel. That was the reason why angel Gabriel said that I am Gabriel who stands before God. Our Lord Jesus Christ also said that I and my Father are one. This is the hidden gospel that confounds the whole world. When people keep on saying that man is not God, what is man? The three witness, water, blood and spirit bear witness that man is God. When he was nailed to the cross, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. As soon as the spirit left him, he gave up the ghost. When the soldier came to inspect whether he was really dead, he used his sword to pierce his side. What, come, what came out was water and blood. It is that water and blood which is used in washing away all our sins 
and the sins of the entire world. Every work done in this whole surface of the earth until the end of time is done by blood, water, and spirit. Water, blood, and spirit does not exist alone. The three of them are one. That is the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ, when he speaks, uses the word we and not I. The reason we fail in our prayers is that we always exclude the Father in our prayers. Sometimes when we mention the name of God, we either exclude the name of the Father or the Son. When you give glory to the Spirit, you must also glorify the flesh. Since man is of a dual nature, the water, blood and the Spirit are one. You will never find the Spirit standing apart from man. Wherever you find our Lord Jesus Christ, you will find the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. That is the reason Christ said, I and my Father are one. At any time you say that you are responsible for doing this work, you have disgraced the Spirit. When you say that it is the Father that is doing the works, as you give glory to the Spirit, you also give glory to the flesh. You all are living witness to the fact that always we respect what we see with our naked eyes more than what we do not see. Brethren, if you place two plates on the table and said this plate belongs to God and the other plate belongs to the leader the plate that belongs to the leader will be filled with money the one that belongs to God will be empty because you are looking for the things which you can see with your eyes in the same way if you committed a serious crime for which the government can imprison you when you meet the person responsible for the case after you you offer him a bribe he will be satisfied he that does not fear anybody is a useless person because he does not fear god this is the advice we receive from god that who, that whosoever loves god must love his brother christ said that anybody that respects me honors him that sent me any person that does not hear my words it is not my words he, he despises but the words of the one who sent me that was the reason when the disciples of our lord jesus christ saw weeds and maize growing together they requested from their master whether, whether they could remove the weeds he said that both should grow together until the harvest at the time of harvest the angels will come and separate the maize on one side and put the weeds into the fire any person that says i do not respect any man i fear only god he fails where will he find god god and man are one person man and god are one there has never been a time that God has ever separated himself from man. The trouble that exists with human beings is that they do not know that once you see man, you have seen God. Our Lord Jesus Christ also said to his disciples that inasmuch as ye do these things to any of these little ones, you have done it to me. In, in what way did our Lord Jesus Christ do the work? When you are doing some service to man, you are serving God. That was the reason he washed the feet of his disciples, since he knew that he was doing it to God. When you punish the flesh, you are punishing God. Anything that affects the flesh also affects the spirit. In the same way, Whatever affects the spirit also affects the flesh. As we are told that we should not steal, 
tell lies or fornicate. If you commit any of these vices, it affects the spirit. As we are warned that we should not drink, we should not inject things into our body. As soon as you do all these things, it affects the spirit and the flesh also. In the spirit, God is an angel. In the flesh, he is a human being. The angels are the spirits and man is the flame of fire and both of them go together. Wherever man exists, there you will find God. The manifestation of God is in human beings. Wherever you call, wherever you call somebody to come and see God, if the person comes and looks around and he does not see any human being, he will not see God. But if you come here and you find a, a huge man sitting on a magnificent chair with a long beard, you will conclude that you have seen God. Man and God are one entity. Man is not God and God is not man, but God and man are one. Wherever you may go, if you do not see men, what do you see? Will you find a church, hospital, school, or government there? Will you hear songs, find food or music? What social amenities will you find in that place? In spite of the fact that you do not find anything there, there is God. But there is no manifestation because God manifests his glory through man. When Stephen was stoned, he said that he looked up and saw our Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. What he saw was a human being. Anytime in your visions, if you do not find a human being saying, I am Jehovah God, you will not believe. Jacob in the early morning wrestled with a human being. He did not fight with an angel. Neither did he fight with God or spirit, but he fought with a man. Believe me that words and spirit are one. The words and God are one thing. Believe also that water and blood are one thing. Water and blood form man. The spirit is God. And the three together and add the three together and they form man. There is no way you can separate man from God. Both are one and the same thing. Your own failure is that when you go to do a particular thing, you cannot succeed. On the other hand, if you go to a place and say that as you are going there, what you are going to do is not business of man, but that of God, you also fail. If you brought somebody here and asked that everybody should come and hear and bow down to worship him, nobody will accept to worship a human being like himself. When you take God away from anything, it becomes negative. In the same way, when you remove man from any business, it also becomes negative. When somebody is caught stealing and you say God will punish him, he will continue to steal because he knows that God will not punish him. In one way or another, it is a human being who will appear and arrest him. God always operates through man. God will glorify all those who give honor and glory to his name. Whatsoever you do, always attribute the deeds to the Father, and this will please God very much. Flesh and spirit are together to do the work and receive honor and glory. God does not have servants to serve him because people expect to receive the rewards for their services from God in heaven. All those that say that they do not worship man but the true God are enemies of God. 
all those who honor and respect God must also honor and respect human beings. Whenever something is given, the giver must also realize that it is God who is receiving that gift. This attitude will give glory to God. Whenever you go to a place and you are given something, if the giver says, take this thing to God, but as for you, let God be with you. Next time you will not go again, you will say, let God go alone. It has been made clear to us that man and God work together to do the work of God. Any kingdom divided against itself fails, falls. Therefore, you are not separated from God. You cannot pay gratitude to God without paying gratitude to man. Man does not know that he and God are one. That is the reason man claims all the glory for himself. Any conversation that you do not bring in God cannot work. If you say that tomorrow I am going to do this or that for you, you will not succeed because the Father has not signed it. The Spirit can go to Lagos to offer prayer for, to people, but if a human being does not accompany him to show the physical presence of the Spirit there, the work will not manifest in the flesh. When God revealed himself to Saul, he had at the same time revealed himself to Ananias, so that Ananias would go and offer prayers to Saul. Tell me, if Ananias did not go to pray for Saul, how would that work manifest in the flesh? God has, has glory that work. God has glory and bestows glory to man, but man wants to enjoy all the glory by himself and forgets about God. It pleases God when man attributes all the work done to him. The child the father gives you, you claim as your own child. Tell me why you will not suffer from the hand of God. This house you this house you and God built, if you claim ownership of that house, you do not give glory to God. When you include God in your business, that business will succeed. But if you take God away from your business, it will not function. This is the wisdom of this this is the wisdom of our Lord Jesus Christ used to conquer the whole world because he said that I and my father are one. You and the Father are one. Now people begin to say that God is on high. If he is in the sky, who is sitting here? Some people say that God does not exist. Who is that person talking, sitting and walking about? Is it not God? There is such, there is much work to be done in you before you realize that you and God are one. Wherever you find yourself, you are with God. Wherever you find yourself, you are with God. All of you sitting here and the people in the entire world are with God and God is in them. As from today, do not speak on your own volition. Always say that I and my Father are one. When you speak on your own volition, you have put God to disgrace.